Hello everyone. Welcome back to Dr. K. Prem Primer YouTube lecture series presenting by Dr. K. Prem. That's me. In today's lecture, we'll talk about uh, lambda phase vectors. These lambda phase vectors are known to clone the larger DNA fragments, especially for the construction of uh, genomic DNA libraries and CDN libraries these uh, lambda phase vectors are widely used. And you can see the lambda phase wild type genome cannot use directly as a cloning vector. It requires certain modification with respect to the removal of uh, restriction endonucleases and the to increase the insert size the genome segments which are unnecessary for uh, lytic cycle or uh, DNA synthesis or other vital function, that segments of DNA has to be deleted so that we can increase the insert size. So this is a, a gist, gist of a lambda phase vector. So in this lecture, I'm going to tell you the what are the modifications necessary for the lambda genome to use as a vector and the types of uh, lambda phase vectors, they are nothing but uh, insertion vectors and the replacement vectors and their features. And the finally, strategies to clone a DNA fragment into the lambda phase vectors and their applications. So these are the things I'm going to tell you in this lecture. Uh, try to listen carefully to understand the essence of the lecture. Yeah, this is a. Uh, I've drawn these di diagrams, head and tail, where head is uh, consists of uh, DNA, a lambda phase DNA. That's a linear, double stranded DNA molecule with size size of uh, forty nine kb. Yeah, classical map denotes that there are three. The denotes that. The genome can be divided into three categories or three domains. The left domain, which, which has genes which are responsible for DNA, uh, responsible for uh, head and tail protein synthesis and assembly. So you can see A to Z, this region is required for the synthesis of head and tail proteins and assembly of the virus. And the B2 region, which is not necessary for the replication or lytic or lysogenic cycle, uh, which is there in the center. Besides that, there is a region called as int, this, and exo. This is required for the lysogenic cycle of virus. And these are the various uh, repressor proteins. And here, the, this region is required for the DNA synthesis. And this is also repressor. And uh, this is a SR is for the lysis of the cell. So left side, you have uh, head and tail uh, protein synthesis genes. In the center, uh, lysogenic and super infection and immunity and so on. And the right side, you have the genes re responsible for uh, DNA synthesis and host lysis. In addition to this, the pi prime regions of uh, lambda phase have a single strand single strand complementary sequences they are nothing but they are, they are called as a cohesive sites or in short they are called as cos sites so they are they are the 12 base pairs 12 base in length and they are useful in the circularization of the genome of lambda phase once it enters into the e coli that's essential for the replication as well as the integration into the host chromosome. As I told you that, the two modifications are necessary. Two problems are there with the lambda phase. So if you can solve those problems, then only it can be used as a uh, cloning vector. The first problem with the lambda phase genome is that the lambda phase genome has multiple recognition sequences for uh, one restriction endonucleases, one, one endonuclease. So the genome has multiple 
recognition sequence for one enzyme. If, for example, if you see BAMH1 have five restriction sites, BGL2 have six, and the SAL1 is having two. I'm taking only three examples, but uh, most of the enzymes have more than one restriction site. So if that is the case, you cannot use the genome as the cloning vector. So vector or cloning vector supposed to have only one unique or one or unique restriction site for cloning. You cannot have multiple. For that reason, we need to remove the, the unnecessary restriction enzymes from the lambda genome. That's the first problem with this one. For example, you see BAMH1 have five restriction sites, one at the 5,000, two at the 22,000 base pairs, third at the 27, fourth at the 32,000, and four, or fifth at the 42,000. You can see restriction sites, right? 5,000, 22,000, 27,000, 32,000, and 42,000. And the second problem is that it is size is 14 in KP. So if you want to directly use as this one, you can clone up to only three KB. So if you can insert a, a gene fragment into the wild type genome with the three KB, that's a 52 KB, then only that packs into the head of the uh, head of the uh, face. If you can insert, if you want to insert more than the 3 KB, that's a 5%, then the, the genome cannot be packed into the heads of the lambda phase. So that's what is the problem. You can see, you see 14 and, uh, 14 and KB and the 5% and means it almost like 2.45 KB, means roughly 3 KB. 49 plus three is almost 52 KB, roughly 52. When you can increase, when a 52 KB DNA is present between the two left and right cos sites, then only this kind of uh, uh, genome only can pack into the heads of uh, lambda phase. You see, whenever the DNA present between the two cos sites, it should be more or less than the 52 KB then only it will pack into the head. If you increase the, the genome size or the DNA length between the two cast sites more than the 52 KB, it will not pack into the head. It will not pack into the head. So as such, without deleting any DNA segment of uh, lambda phase, you cannot clone the bigger fragments. So if you can avoid these two problems, if you can solve these two problems, or you can solve these two hurdles, then this lambda phase can be used as a uh, cloning vector for the cloning of uh, larger DNA fragments. So in the next slides, I'm going to show you how to remove the restriction sites and how to increase the, uh, how to increase the, uh, insertion or insert size by deleting the lambda phase genome. As I told you that the BAMH have have five sites in the lambda phase genome, one at the 5,000, 22,000, and 27, 32, and uh, roughly 41 or 42. So in vitro metagenesis was uh, infancy at that time. But that's not the, so we cannot use, we, they did not use it. Instead of that, they used the natural selection, nothing but in vivo metagenesis to remove the, these uh, restriction sites from the lambda phase genome. You see, for that, the lambda genome, lambda phase genome, was uh, lambda phase was uh, infected with the bacteria, infected to bacteria, which is producing the BAMH1 restriction system. So if that bacteria have a ability to produce the BAMH1 uh, restriction enzyme, if you can infect such bacteria the, with the lambda phase, 
Then a few uh, after infection, after infection, a few plaques plaques will be formed. A few flakes formed means that if we take a culture uh, for biomation producing uh, bacteria and you infect that with the uh, lambda phase, then the, the injected uh, lambda phase genome is degraded by the biomation restriction system of, system of uh, uh, bacteria. But certain, uh, certain, certain genomes some, some genomes of lambda are escaped from the BAMH1 and able to form a plaques. Means they undergone certain modification to escape the activity of BAMH1. So, if uh, in one in in one round it may be last the one uh, one restriction site, and if you can repeat the this process, means you got the few uh, plaques in the first round cycle, and if you though that uh, that lambda genome is isolated, or the flakes are isolated, again infected with the same bacteria, means you next time you get the more plaques. Means now uh, most uh, more uh, genomes are escaped due to the modification. And if you can repeat that cycle, at the end of a, a certain number of cycles, the, the phase genome will be free of all the BAMH1 sites. Now, this uh, lambda phase genome is having no BAMH1 sites because of the free, uh, you know, cyclic uh, infection of the BAMH1 producing bacteria. And it, uh, lambda phase undergone the modifications. That modifications are at the BAMH1 sites so that the lambda phase genome is uh, now, it's not uh, uh, sensitive to the, or uh, it is not going to be digested by the BAMH1 uh, restriction enzymes, right? This is how you can uh, remove the rest unnecessary restriction sites from the lambda phase genome. I'll tell you, I'll take you, I'll tell you one more example. You see, this is a BGL2, which is having the almost six sites, right? So the same site, you know, now again, once you, uh, that DNA, which is, uh, having the modification at the BAMH1 site, that genome only again, that phase only again uh, infect, that phase only infect the bacteria which is going to produce the BGL2. In vivo mutation and uh, the cyclic uh, uh, infection of the lambda phase with the BGL2 uh, producing uh, bacteria, then uh, you can you can modify the entire, uh, all the restriction sites. So to remove the unnecessary restriction sites from the lambda genome, you can use the in vivo mutation or natural mutation. Through this, you can remove the, all the restriction sites which are there in the lambda phase genome. This is the first modification required to use as a cloning vector. And the second modification is that, it is wild type genome can allow the only 5% of its means only 3 kb but 3 kb is not enough so you want to clone 20 kb so what we have to do is we have to identify the dna segment which are not necessary for the lambda phase uh, lytic cycle and uh, dna synthesis and other, uh, other important functions if you can identify them, then that can be deleted from the lambda phase genome so that we can increase the cloning, clonable size fragment or insert size we can increase. So the, the more you delete, the more, the bigger fragment you can clone by using the, by clone into the lambda phase vectors. So two types of vectors are constructed here. One is the insertion vectors, other one is the uh, replacement vectors. So in the insertion vectors, a small chunk, I mean, almost like a 8 to 10 KB of a, uh, lambda DNA fragment is removed, uh, removed uh, from the lambda phase genome. You can see. Yeah, this region, as I told you that B2 region, B2 region is not necessary for uh, 
not essential for DNA replication or viability or infection. So if you can delete this one, almost eight to 10 kb, right? And again, you uh, re-ligate the left and right borders. You see, now we, we, we deleted only roughly eight kb of uh, lambda DNA. And the left and right borders are ligated again. And if you add to that e on one site in the e on one site in the CI, that's a repressor protein, which is required for the uh, lysogenic cycle, right? And if you can, uh, you can also add a, a lag Z prime region, re region to screen the uh, recombinants from the non recombinants. And here, when you delete the only eight KB, then uh, you can add or zero to eight KB insert size only. If you re delete eight, eight plus three, 11. So the insertion vectors you can uh, prepare by deleting the eight KB, which is not which is eight KB seg like lambda segment DNA, which is not essential for uh, DNA replication or viability or infection. So when you clone, you, you can add the equivalent site through the ECI, uh, lag Z, and if you insert it, then uh, this kind of uh, lambda phase can undergo the only lytic cycle. Recombinants goes to undergo the lytic cycle. And non-recombinants, uh, without insert, they have a ability to undergo the lysogenic cycle. So insertion vector, in insertion vector, you delete the lambda phase genome approximately between the eight to 10 KB, which is not essential for DNA replication or uh, uh, viability or infection, right? And here, in case of replacement vectors, the region between the J and N up to year, up to year. So the region almost like uh, 15 to 20 KB, 15 to 20 KB is deleted in case of uh, replacement vectors. So the fragment to be deleted from the lambda genome, that's called as a stuffer fragment, the stuffer fragment. So you see, not essential for DNA replication, viability and infection. When you delete, and you can add, you know, deleted, and you can add the polylinkers. So polylinkers facilitate the cloning of uh, various DNA fragments. And you can also include the lag Z for uh, identification of the lag Z prime for identification of recombinants. Here you see the DNA insert size is almost uh, 0 to 23 kb. So when a, this DNA insert is cloned into the uh, this replacement vector through the polylinkers, then that phase only undergoes the lytic cycle. And it cannot undergo, there is no scope for a lysogenic cycle. Lysogenic cycle is not possible. So this is what is the replacement vector. In replacement vector, a stuffer fragment whose length is between uh, uh, 20 KB is deleted between the regions of J and N. J and N. And uh, polylinkers are added for the clone, uh, to facilitate the cloning of various DNA fragments. And uh, lag Z prime is also added to this uh, replacement vector so that uh, you can screen the recombinant plagues and non-recombinant plagues with uh, just with the uh, eye uh, with eye. In the next slide, as I told you that here in the previous slides, we have constructed the, we have modified the genome. And with that, uh, we can have a insertion vectors and uh, replacement vectors. He, this is what is a replacement vector. Oh, sorry, uh, this is what is the uh, insertion vector. Best example is a uh, lambda ZT10, whose size is uh, 43 KB. 43 KB means almost 6 KB is deleted. Right? As I told you that it is having uh, cost sites, 
at the pi prime ends of the linear double strand DNA. And the left arm, right arm, in between, there is a CI gene. In that CI gene, there is a eco RM site, GAA TTC. So this is a, a lambda ZT vector, size is 43 KB. Now, uh, the vector is digested with the eco RM enzyme. You see, eco RM identifies the uh, GAA TTC there in the CA, and it is not there anywhere in the vector. It is only there in the CI gene and it digests the vector into two fragments, left arm and the right arm. And insert also, uh, inserts also digested with the eco hormone, produces the uh, eco hormone uh, poisonous sites whose the length, uh, whose uh, 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 DNA fragment length between the zero to eight KB and now uh, the you see eco uh, uh cohesive ends now inserts and the uh, left arm and right arm of the base are uh, ligated with the help of uh, t4 dna ligase and there are two possibilities uh, in this one so there may be a self ligation uh, only left arm and right arm are uh, again uh, ligated and form a Again, uh, uh, lambda ZT10 vector. And there is a possibility to form a in, uh, recombinant by uh, ligating with the insert in between them. Here you can see left arm and the right arm in between the insert is there. So vectors, self ligation, vector arms and uh, insert ligation. And now you provide the uh, DNA proteins of uh, for uh, uh, tail and the head of virus, and then what will happen? Uh, the these proteins, phase proteins, undergoes the assembly and form a complete virus. This is called as a in vitro packing of vector. For in vitro packing of vector, you just need to provide the proteins required for the head, head formation, tail and, uh, and tail. Then and also have uh, the enough size, uh, enough size is present between the cast sites, then it will be packed into the head. You see, this is a assembled virus. This is assembled virus. When you go for transfection, transfection, then uh, with the suitable host, the but but uh, the plaques are formed. The two kinds of plaques are uh, uh, pos have a possibility. One one uh, uh, type is uh, turbid plaques. Other one is a clear plaques. The turbid plaques are uh, indicates the non recombinants means which are self-ligated. And the clear flakes indicates that they are recombinants, which are uh, having the inserts and forms the clear flakes. So this is what is the cloning strategy and the screening of uh, recombinants by using the insertion vectors. Here we can see the replacement vectors. Replacement vectors means what the uh, larger segment of DNA is uh, removed from the lambda phase, D, uh, lambda phase DNA. And in that place, uh, DNA fragment is replaced. That's what is replaced. The best examples are uh, lambda EMBL4, whose size is uh, 29 KB. You can see left arm is uh, 20 KB and right arm is 9 KB. In between that, you have a polylinkers. The polylinkers are flanked by the uh, the stuffer fragment is flanked by the polylinkers. Polylinkers are nothing but multiple restriction sites. MCS means uh, it have a multiple restriction sites which which are which facilitates the cloning of various DNA fragments. The polylinkers, the DNA fragments, uh, stuffer fragment is uh, flanked by the polylinkers, where uh, EBS EBS means. Uh, uh, here you can see E. coli, BAM H1, and the SOL1. So EBS, 
two polylinkers are there. In between them, there is a stuffer fragment. So here, in the insertion vector, we use the single enzyme to insert the uh, insert. Here, we use the two restriction sites, or two restriction sites and one enzyme only to remove the stuffer fragment, which is there between the two polylinkers. In that place, we will insert the larger DNA fragment. Now you can see, here I'm you're going to use the BAMH1 restriction endonuclease, which will scan the uh, vector of our uh, restriction site. Here it is, there is a BAMH1, and it will cleave there, there itself, and forms the, release the one uh, left board, left uh, arm, and one more enzyme, BAMH1 identifies the polylinker, BAMH1 and releases. And also here, there is a stuffer fragment is released. Stuffer fragment can be, can consist of a restriction endonuclease, or BAMH1 or any other enzyme. So that it again, to inhibit the, uh, the stuffer fragment ligation with the left and right arm, it has to be degraded, degraded. So that's why, one non-specific restriction in the nucleus is there in the stuffer fragment, and that will degrade the stuffer fragment into two or three fragments. Now, the stuffer fragment have a less chance, or no chance to ligate with the vector arms. Now, we can uh, prepare a insert with the BAMH1, uh, in BAMH1, and now you can go for the ligation with the by employing the t 4 dn ligase, right? Here you get, uh, again, there are chance for uh, two possibilities. One is the uh, arms, left arm and right arm and the insert. And there is a scope for uh, self ligation of the two arms because they possess the same cohesive ends. So the recombinant one have a 20, 20 and nine. It is almost like a, 14 NKB, whereas the non-recombinant or self-ligated arms are having only 29 KB. So there is a one uh, interesting uh, rule with the uh, lambda phase genome. Whenever lambda phase genome having the size of uh, between 37 to 53 only between the cost sites, the the cause the the genome between the two cause sites should be between uh, 37 to 53 kb then only that genome can be packed under the head if the the size of the genome between the two cause sites is less than the 37 kb then that genome cannot be packed into the lambda phase head here you can see only recombinant is having the optimum size between the two cause sites to pack into the head. Whereas uh, self-ligated vector whose uh, size is uh, 29 KB, it cannot be packed into the heads. Yeah, see, recombinant construct is having a uh, 49 KB, 49 KB, which will pack into the heads. So cause sites, cause sites, between the two cause sites, at least, the genome minimum size is the 37, 37 KB and maximum size is a 53 KB. If the, the genome between the two cost sites, if it is uh, between the 37 and the 52 K, 53 KB, we are 52 KB, then only that genome can be packed into the head. If not, the more or less, more than the 52 KB or less than the 37 KB, that genome cannot be packed into the head. So this is how we can avoid the self-ligated vectors, uh, 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 we can avoid the self-ligated vectors so they cannot be packed into the heads. So see, self-ligated vector arms are, do have only 29 KB, that's less than the 38 KB to pack into the virus head. As I told you that, between the two cause sites, the genome size must be, shall be 38 and the uh, and not more than the 52 KB. So this, they have to meet this criteria. If the genome size is the size of the DNA between two car sites, when it is uh, 38 or uh, less than 50, 
two, then only it will be packed. So we now the self-ligated vector cannot pack into the head. Only the recombinant construct is uh, going to pack into the head. So if you provide the proteins uh, for uh, head synthesis, tail synthesis, and uh, they'll assemble the virus, that's called as in vitro packing of the vector. And you have a assembled virus, only assembled virus where only recombinant uh, construct is packed into the head and uh, the, the self-ligated vector have no scope to ligate it, uh, back into the head. And you can do the transfection with the suitable bacteria and the plagues are formed. Then all the clones, you, all the plagues which are formed, uh, form, they are all recombinant, 100% recombination uh, recombinant clones. You can get the, through the replacement vectors. So this is what is the strategy of uh, lambda phase uh, lambda phase replacement vectors. Now you will see the uh, you know differences between the insertion vectors and uh, replacement vectors. You can see modified lambda genome has single restriction enzyme you can use in the insertion vector to clone the your insert insert. But here the stuffer fragment is uh, deleted by using the two enzymes, and the same enzymes can be used to. Uh, clone the foreign DNA insert of foreign origin. So the, the insert size is uh, proportional to the, the amount of DNA is deleted from the lambda genome. Here you can see insertion vector, a small chunk of DNA was deleted around the 8 to 8 KB. But here almost a bigger chunk of DNA is deleted, more than 20 KB. And here you can use uh, insertion vector only one a uh, small size fragment can be inserted without deleting the much much deleting the uh, as DNA. The size of the DNA fragment to be cloned is a zero to ten kb in case of insertion vector, but uh, whereas in case of uh, replacement vectors it is between the twenty to twenty three kb. So here uh, ligation, uh, trimolecular ligation means so two arms of the uh, vector one molecule of the insert trimolecular same here also selection of the recombinant depends on the uh, ci gene in the insertion vector or lag z in the lambda zap one where insertional inactivation of the gene ci gene or lag z gene will give you clear or white plaques or recombinants so in case of insertion vector uh, in case of uh, where uh, lambda ZT, where uh, CI gene is insert, uh, in is inactivated, so the colonies are uh, uh, clear. If you use the lambda ZAP as a vector where lag Z prime is inactivated, again, plaques are in a white color and the non recombinants are uh, blue color. That's what is the uh, selection method. And the selection is here is size, size of the clone. So only recombinant constructs can be packed into the head. That's a one strategy. Other one is a spy to phenotypy. And in case of insertion vectors, there is a scope for recombinants and non-recombinants. But in case of replacement vectors, all of them are recombinants. Examples for the insertion vectors are the lambda ZT10, and lambda zap 11. In case of uh, replacement vectors, uh, lambda EMBL4, lambda zem 11, lambda zem 12, and the charan vectors. So this is uh, these are the differences between the insertion vectors and replacement vectors. And advantages of the lambda phase vectors, you can clone bigger fragments and the in vitro packing helps them and the transfection is very efficient than the transformation and uh, you get the more recombinants than the plasmids and the shelf life of the recombinant clone is also higher than the bacterial colonies. These are the different advantages. Most of the time, the lambda phase vectors are used to construct the genomic and uh, cDNA libraries. So this is all about the lambda phase vectors. 
uh, types, modifications, and features and advantages of the Lambda phase. And hope you like my lecture. If at all, if you like it, and if you want uh, regular updates, try to subscribe my channel. That's a Dr. K Prime Primer. And no issues if you want to share. And if you do like it, try to give thumbs up. And if you have any clarity, if you need any clarity or if you want any further uh, information and write to me through the comment session, I'll get back to you as soon as I see. Thank you all for listening. See you again soon. Until then, bye-bye.